afternoon and welcome along to 90 Minutes Live Match Highlights. We are here back at uh, Watson Park for what is probably the game of the day in the uh, Southern League today. It's National Non-League Day. So uh, hopefully many fans are out supporting their uh, local non-league clubs. We are here for where? Who you can see warming up just here. There they are over there. And they face second place Bedford Town who uh, head down the other end warming up. As I say, probably the, uh, the game of the day. Second versus third in the league. So uh, hopefully we are in for a uh, interesting game and uh, obviously hopefully three points to the home side. So I do remember we were uh, on social media. We are on Instagram and we are on Twitter, which is 90 Minutes EHR. Also on Facebook, which is 90 Minutes Live. And on TikTok, which is 90 Minutes Live 7. So uh, give us a follow on there. And uh, right, before we get on with the uh, match highlights, we'll take a look at those two team lineups. From the team that won 3 1 at North League, this time at last week, in comes Mitch Hahn, in comes John Clements, and onto the bench go Kieran Bishop and Freddie Moncur. So, where we'll line up with Fred Burbage in goal, the two fullbacks, Steph Giorgio and David Soto, who uh, there was a query about a hamstring injury with him, but he is fit, and the two central defenders, Echo Goga and Jack Grosvenor. Mitch Hahn will operate just in front of those, and then just in front of him, the other two in midfield will be Alex Warman and George Ironson in support of a three-man front three, which will have Theo Afori and Joe Dearman playing wide and John Clements through the middle. The wear substitutes Ben Siggers, Freddie Moncur, Jack Dreyer, Kieran Bishop and Richard Ennin. As far as Bedford are concerned, well, they've only won one of their last seven. They're 16th in the form league and come off the back of two defeat. The other game, of course, big game of the day that I alluded to, Welling Garden City against the AFC Dunstable. That's one and two in the form league and two teams that really have a great opportunity as well of finishing in that top five. But a full start uh, for the second time, I think, a referee. Quite sure for the referee. I think he saw Joe Dearman sort of a little bit edge into the Bedford half. But uh, well, it's, it's only thing about Mr Coran, but I will say, to get it out of the way, he got uh, bold red on my spreadsheet, which uh, regular listeners will know what that means. So let's hope he has a better game here. As uh, all given away by uh, Echo Coker early on for uh, where and he's given it away uh, on that side to Leon Lovejoy all out uh, on the far side of the field Bedford uh, coming forward very quickly Jack Green plays the ball out on the far side it's threaded out to the wing and then thumped forward comes off the back of uh, David Soto from uh, Lewis Green takes the throw quickly Bedford look like they want to get on with it maybe stinging from the words of the manager Lee Bertram after uh, Tuesday's defeat, Lovejoy's got the ball here on the edge of the area, fires it in, goes into the side netting and where have a goal kick and uh, Bedford have started like uh, a side that did get rather a strong talking to after Tuesday. Uh, Fred Burbage will collect the ball and prepare to take a goal kick. Easter is looming of course for uh, where it means uh, a trip to Tame on Easter Saturday and then the visit of Kings Langley here on Easter Monday. Bedford have got three games in the next week. They're at home to Tame on Tuesday, at home to Waltham Abbey on Easter Saturday. And then a massive game which could well decide the championship away to Biggleswade Town on uh, Easter Monday. Fred Burbage's kick skims off the head of uh, Carl Mentor and sets Theo Afori going down this right-hand side. Theo trying to go outside Connolly, but uh, he shows too much strength, manages to win the ball. Liam Dawson short has given it away again as uh, Alex Warman can't pick it up though. And coming forward will be uh, Fernando Del Toxtel. Toxtel's ball on that far side for Ryan Blake. Blake coming inside, the shot is pushed through and it's Lobjoy who's going to put it in the back of the net. Where caught out at Leon Lobjoy. Made the run on the edge of the area, they didn't pick him up, and Bedford go in front with 13 minutes gone. Yeah, I mean, he's 
come through well there as he uh, spotted the ball, he spotted the run. Yeah, he was coming, he was stuck in behind the, uh, behind the rear defence and just about beat the Fred to it. I, I think the Fred, the Fred the looked like the Fred was going to get down to it and, and get there, but Lovejoy just about managed to uh, get in front of him and poke the ball into the next game with Fred the lead. Free kick is going to be taken by uh, Kyle Connolly with the right boots. Carl Mentzer has come up from the back. Carl Mentzer against Echo Coker. That would be an interesting duel in the air. So uh, free kick, Connolly, both arms in the air. Fred Burbage should get this and does quite comfortably. Looks up once again, he aims on this side for Theo Afori and this time he's found him. The cavalry are late in arriving, but Theo's going into the box here. It's still Theo Afori. Theo Afori across the box. George Ironton, oh, takes a deflection, goes over for a corner. Otherwise, Smith would certainly have had some work to do. And George Ironton is going to get the uh, responsibility. Plays it along the ground to John Clements on the edge of the area. Clements, so he's beaten to it by Dudley. It was a decent challenge, and it's all going to come to nothing as uh, Lewis Green puts it forward for Ryan Blake, and the ball just came off of uh, David Soto's heel, which delayed Blake's progress. Still got the ball down that uh, right hand side. Looks pull it across the box. He does, and oh, Jack drove there, and oh, it's hit in from the edge of the area. Liam Lobjoy makes wear pay. It was poor defending, it wasn't cleared, and from the edge of the area all the way along the ground into the bottom left-hand corner, and Bedford lead here 2-0 with 19 minutes gone. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, really got the, uh, the Bedford players and the Bedford crowd up, hasn't it? You know, um, we said early on, you know, they looked like they was really up for it, and uh, you can tell sort of, you know, from, the, uh, from the reactions that they were. You know. And the thing is, I mean, the wear players, they're saying around, there's a couple of players, you know, moaning at each other and you know, giving each other their thoughts and uh, yeah I, 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 I wonder if their uh, you know, heads have dropped already. I mean, 20 minutes gone 2-0 down I don't have to push the panic button but uh, haven't really created much up top so far. No, oh, no, no. I say that and uh, Alex Warman's given the ball away to Ryan Blake who's missed an opportunity to make it 3-0. And there are players as well. Talked of Jack Grosvenor not making a mistake. I don't think Ali Warman's made one till then. But we certainly need suddenly to take a breather and use all the experience of players like John Clements and Mitch Hahn. Because uh, at the moment they look shaky. As, uh, oh, well, here we go. It's still a four. He got the ball away from the goalkeeper, Smith. He thought it had gone out. It hasn't. And suddenly, Bedford were in trouble and got out of trouble by Jack Green. Oh, the corner's going to be taken on this near side by uh, Joe Dearman. Decent corner, Grosvenor goes up, it's bundled in to the back of the net. I don't know who's going to claim it. Could be Jack Grosvenor, it could be Alex Warman. It could also be Echo Goga. Take your pick out of three there, but we're all right back in it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it looks like they're determined now, you know, they've got that goal, they've grabbed the ball, you know, they're, they're striking, you know, geeing each other up, you're watching, you know, you've got George Ironton there, he's doing them up, Mitch is getting them the same, you know, Tamar will be doing the same as well, I know, I can uh, just see him doing, and, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's got them right back in this game, and uh, that's got their backs up now. George in the end, and Joe couldn't keep it in, it's going to be a throw in. Well, they've given it Alex Warman, so it's his second of the season. And, uh, I'm not going to argue with that. No, no, I'm not. I mean, I, I mean whether it was him or not, I don't know. I don't know whether the, uh, whether the players will be arguing amongst themselves. But uh, as you say, you know, the tenor has announced it as Alex Warman's goal. So uh, we'll, uh, for now, we'll give it to him. Yeah, Jack, Jack Rovner certainly helped it forward. Echo Goga was involved as well. But uh, could well have been Alex who uh, put the ball into the back of the net. Corner's a good good time for Alex Warman. He's other way a goal, of course, came direct from a corner. He's got the ball, and the referee's saying actually it's a throw in. Even Connolly didn't know. So uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> he's, a, he's a bit poor when the players don't know what's going on, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Carl Mensa then will take the throw in in the first half added time here at uh, Rodson Park, goes uh, all the way across, headed down by 
Lovejoy, of course, is on a hat trick straight into the arms of Fred Burbage, a very grateful Fred Burbage in his lime green kit. Fred takes his time and time enough for the referee to sound an end to the first half here at Wadsham Park with Bedford Town leading by two goals to one. Two early goals inside the opening 20 minutes by Liam Lovejoy. First one where Ware didn't pick him up in the area and the second one a poor clearance by Jack Grosvenor which he pounced the bomb to bury past Fred Burbage from 20 yards out. Where though got hope in the 25th minute corner came across and it was bundled into the back of the net with Alex Warman getting the last touch which makes the half time score where one Bedford Town 2 and it's live in association with Easy Shelf Direct just about to get the second half underway in now bright sunshine at Watson Park blue skies not a cloud in the sky and hopefully the second half will give us as much entertainment as we had in the first but uh, perhaps just uh, if you'll forgive us, anybody listening from Bedford, and we know we have listeners from Bedford when you team are here, we of course would like a little bit of a change in the scoreline. But uh, let's see what we get. The referee has checked with both his assistants, and away we go with Bedford kicking from left to right here upwards of Bart. Long ball immediately forward onto the head of Jack Rodner. Who forward by Mitch Hahn, headed on well by John Clements. Here's Theo Afori going down the right hand side. Clements in the area, George Ironton arriving, and Theo's shot is easily saved by Mark Smith, diving away to his left hand side. But uh, you know, immediate side of what we were saying in the first half get those wide boys involved in the game. But uh, anyway, David Soto will take the throw down the line over his head by John Clements for Theo Afori, and here's George Ironton into the box. First touch wasn't too good. Smith's come out and smothers it with his legs, but where get a corner? But George will know he should have had a better first touch there. Very positive start for the home side. What can they do from this corner? It comes across. Smith punches it out, bounces it off of Jack Green, and he's put in the back of the net by John Clements. Where level helps on. Bedford in all sorts of trouble inside their own area and as the ball came through it was John Clements who put it in for his fifth goal of the season and we're right back level. Been set pieces that have cost Bedford two of them. Haven't cleared them. It was a poor punch by the goalkeeper, and when it was threaded back in, it was John Clements who was the quickest to react and the way back level air and everything to play for. Paul Halsey's now taken up just uh, on our left hand side, I see. So uh, he's watching here with us in the stand. 2 2. Well, we thought it might be a cracker and it's developing into one. Here's Collard for Bedford. Plays the ball forward for Liam Dolson. Dolson back for Collard again. Collard looks for Liam Dolson on that far side of the field, surrounded by blue shirts. Gives it away to Alex Warman. Alex's ball forward to John Clements. This is a much different way aside than we saw in the opening 20 minutes. Here comes John Clements, right hand side of the area. He's got Mensah in front of him, fires in the shot! Oh, it's gone in! Oh, straight through, Mark Smith! Paul Halsey celebrates in front of us. And in three second half minutes, this game has turned on its head. And we're a bit back from 2 0 down to lead 3 2 here at Watson Park. Plenty of time to go though. Plenty more to unfold from this one, I think. Kick on this near side. Kept in well by Joe Deerman. 
in the end meant to bring clear it on by Alex Warman and George Ironton and Tim Smith just a little bit off his line and uh, well it's always worth a try we've seen them scored from further out than that this season <laughs> and Kyle Connolly will pick it up for uh, Bedford approaching the half high line gives the ball away straight to Georgia puts it back to John Clement Steele with Tory step pointed where he won it and got it right hand side of the box Theo Afori still, Theo Afori, oh good save by Smith of his near post and he carries the ball behind for a goal. Joe Demon forward on the edge of the area as John Clements wrestling but Martin sorts it out. Rio de Silva's first touch finds Lovejoy inside the centre circle, plays the ball forward, Lovejoy's making a run right hand side, we're going to have some defending to do here. He's against David Soter, fires the ball quite aimlessly in the end, all the way across. And it goes left foot him right back, looks to the bench, the two-man uh, werewolf, Freddie Montgomery and uh, Joe Dean, but everybody else lined up at the edge of the area, chips it across, Collard's header, oh brilliant save by Fred Burbage, he kept Wes leading sack there, hadn't hit Collard up, got the header in, super save by Fred. Oh, takes it short to uh, Liam Dalton, can't control the ball, and Steph Giorgio will find Joe Dearman, and we've got the two that come forward here. Only Theo Afori in front of him. Joe Dearman goes to the left-hand side, so does Theo Afori. Didn't really get on the same wavelength there, but Theo's got the ball back, goes down on the challenge. Referee says nothing doing. Bedford will come away with Jack Green. Finds Rio de Silva. De Silva's ball the side. As Blake backpedalling and then giving it away to Mitch Hart. Puts it back inside the Bedford half and Freddie Mulk goes onside inside the area here. Freddie Mulk goes for glory and puts the ball in the side netting. So free kick to be taken by Rio de Silva. And unfortunately Mr Graham continues not to cover himself in glory as far as we're concerned. Kick is a poor one down with David Soto on the edge of the area before he goes in. And where could come forward here if John Clements can rattle this ball away? They've got attackers left, right, and centre. Is Steph Giorgio going into the box? Can he make it? Oh, can he make it? Certainly can't, as Mark Smith has saved Bedford with his legs. Steph Giorgio's head goes down, Bedford come in the opposite direction. Where have got plenty of players back, though. Ryan Blake, right hand side for Tom Mentor, who's up the right wing. Here's Blake again with Sota in front of him. Blake tries to go outside. Sota gets the ball across, dealt with by Echo Goka, a diving Echo Goka. It's going to break the Lobjoy. Echo Goka super block the edge of the area. Lobjoy again, this time blocked by Steph Giorgio. And suddenly we're almost in an NBA game here as we're coming forward. But Mitch Hart puts the brakes on. And on that far side, he will bring in. Freddie Moncur back to Mitch Hahn forward. John Clement's header is a great one looking for Joe Dearman, but uh, ball bounces off his chest. And Carl Mentor will get it away for Bedford Town, only as far as Steph Georgia. And the ball will break to Jack Grosvenor inside the centre circle. Near side to Theo Afori. Here goes Jack Grosvenor forward, looking for the ball for Joe Dearman. Joe Dearman's in the area here, but there's a flag up on the far side for Oxford. Two minutes plus time added on for stoppages at a sunlit Watson Park on a cracking national non-league day. One of the best games we've seen this season. Could get better here as Theo Afori is on the right-hand side of the box. Good ball by Freddie Moncur. Theo's there with yellow shirts in front of him. And he's all! Oh, John Clements thought he got an hat-trick. And Smith was going the wrong way. Adjusted his position and kept Bedford in the game with his legs. He pumps it down that far side, pulled down on his chest by Theo Afori. Got Stallard in front of him, Afori turns inside him. Defender gets a boot in, but where get the ball back with Joe Dearman? Joe turns back for Mitch Hahn, finds Joe again on that far side. Starts a run, Joe Dearman still going through. Here goes Joe Dearman still going to the edge of the area. The ball breaks. Freddie Moncur is the Alfari. It's 4 2, and surely it's all over. Theo Alfari thumps the ball. Fred Burbage comes all the way down to celebrate. Bedford look crestfallen, and listen to that crowd.
absolutely deflated. And uh, this crowd's doing really good behind these, uh, these rare players now to, uh, to cheer them over like in the line in a few minutes. Lewis Green beats uh, Richard N into it, finds the aforementioned Ryan Blake down this near side, inside for Jack Green, ball given away, Richard Enning comes away with it, long ball forward looking for Theo Afori, and almost got behind Gallard, but uh, Gallard pumps the ball towards the half way line to Joe Diem, and it doesn't matter because that's it, it's all over on Don Lee Day, and what a part, and what a victory for our home side. It's finished here, where for Bedford Town 2. And if we're wanted revenge for that 7-1 something at the New Erie back in October, they have got it this afternoon. Bedford tumbled to their third consecutive defeat. Ware's playoff push continues to pick up momentum and they turned it on its head from being 2-0 down after 19 minutes. A superb second half, scored two from John Clements inside two minutes which turned the game on its head and then one in stoppage time from Theo Afori. Thoroughly deserved excellent second half from where